Hello, my name is Marika and I'm a book and paper conservator at the Centre for Cultural Materials Conservation at the University of Melbourne. We currently have three lab spaces here at the Victorian Archive Centre. Today I'd like to discuss with you the importance of looking after your paper-based materials. We'll be looking at bound volumes as well as flat documents and one of the techniques we'll be looking at today is brush vacuuming. As you can see, this book is quite large and quite heavy. It is a female prison register which is currently held at the Public Records Office of Victoria. You need to be very careful when you're handling such large volumes and also when you need to prop them open for when you actually need to clean them. This particular volume, as I said, is quite large. It also has photographs which we need to be very aware of when we're going to be brush vacuuming. We can see here it has um, paper that is stuck in so we need to be also very careful of it as well. And this register has a lot of dust in the margins which we're going to be looking at cleaning. But the first consideration we need to look at is how we actually hold this book open. As you can see here, I have some foam that's been specially cut and this can be cut from um, any type of foam at all. You just need something that's nice and hard and solid that will support the book. If you can't actually access any foam like this, there's two other ways we can help you with that. The first one, bubble wrap, just with some cotton ties around it and you can use this under the front cover of the book to help prop it open or you can make a pillow using calico with foam on the inside or you could also use polystyrene beads. We now have our bound volume ready for brush vacuuming. First considerations though are what tools are we actually going to be requiring to undertake this process. A soft bristle brush is really important as we don't want to damage the photographs or any lifting pieces of paper that may be adhered to the pages. We also have small brush attachments as well which allows you to get into margins and also into creases within paper. You need to look after your hearing while you're vacuum cleaning. So if you're vacuuming for a considerable period of time, it's really important to use ear muffs or ear plugs, whatever is comfortable for you. If the volume is very dusty, we also advise that you would wear a dust mask as well. The type of vacuum cleaner we use when we're brush vacuuming has an adjustable suction as well as a HEPA filter on it. And when we're actually brush vacuuming the pages, initially we concentrate on the inner margin of the volume and then we gently work across, avoiding any sensitive areas, so any tears or maybe any lifting photographs. As you can see here, I've used a couple of different techniques. You can just use a straight brush, or if you're a little bit nervous about the bristles on this brush, it's always advisable to use a soft bristle brush. It's much more gentler on the paper support. This volume that I have here is a rate book, and I wanted to demonstrate to you today how we actually brush vacuum pages that have been affected by mould. It's really important to take care of your own personal health when you're going to brush vacuum a book that may have mould or that definitely has mould. It's always important to be careful. So gloves are a really important thing to wear and you can change them quite regularly. I like to use nitrile gloves but you can also use latex gloves as well. Cotton gloves aren't really appropriate. You can use a dust mask, which I showed you earlier, which um, can just protect you a little bit further. However, if you're going to be dealing with documents that are very mouldy, I would recommend using a face mask that actually has a filtration system on it. So there's no chance of you breathing in any mould spores whatsoever. This is what I would use. I would also use a fume hood. However, if you don't have access to a fume hood, you can definitely clean mouldy documents outside on a cool, cool to warm day, 
no wind whatsoever and preferably in a central courtyard so you have some protection around you. Another consideration is the brushes that you use. Now earlier I showed you you could use a soft bristle brush or these little nylon brushes. However, if you do have mouldy documents, it's really important to separate the brushes that you're going to use on mouldy documents and the brushes that you're not going to use on mouldy documents. The reason why we use a soft bristle brush on mouldy documents is because the document or paper is made of cellulose matter, which is organic, and the mould uses this as a food source, which therefore breaks down the paper support. So you just need to be extra specially careful. So we always like to write on them and put them in a separate bag so they're quarantined from just the regular brushes you may be using. So when we're brush vacuuming a book that has mould on it, you just need to be very, very careful. So we would do the normal brush vacuuming technique that I showed you earlier. However, when you get to an area where you think there possibly is mould, we need to be a little bit more careful in this area. This is where we use a soft bristle brush. Okay, for my final demonstration, I'll be showing you how we brush vacuum a flat work on paper or a flat document. But before I go into that, the most important thing I need to explain to you is I still have my gloves on because we are still working on a mouldy document. You could also still use your dusk mask or if you wanted to, if the document's really mouldy, you could get a professional mask like this one, which has the canisters attached to it. So what we need to do when we're actually vacuuming a flat based document is we need to make sure that it's nice and flat to the table. So we can do this via just using some mount board or some paper and then a weight. You can easily purchase these uh, from archival suppliers or you could just make your own. Also if you wanted to you could use a glass weight as well because they're quite easy to see through. We just want to hold that nice and flat. Now, as I explained earlier, paper is made up of cellulose fibres, which is an organic matter, which mould loves to eat. So in this instance, with this work on paper, you can actually see that the mould has eaten through the paper substrate. So it's very, very fragile. So in this instance, we could also use an embroidery hoop, or I've got a little wooden frame here that I've stapled some mesh to. This just goes over the surface of the document. It gives you a lot more control when you're vacuuming and it just makes sure that the paper's a little bit more stable. So what do you do with the document once you've brush vacuumed it? Well, my suggestion to you is we actually pop it in an inert plastic protection enclosure. In this case, I'm going to use polypropylene. We just very carefully slide it in, knowing that this edge is quite fragile. And then this actually allows you to handle it and also store it in an archival storage environment. The tools and techniques I've used today in my demonstration can be easily undertaken by yourself. The equipment you see before you is equipment that I use on a professional capacity on a day-to-day -day basis. However, you too can do this at home. These pillows are easily made using calico and foam on the inside or polystyrene beads. Bubble wrap is simply tied up with cotton tape or you can actually get some wedges cut out of foam. Gloves are easily accessible. You could use a dusk mask or, as I mentioned earlier, if you're more serious about mould removal and there's a lot of it, you can actually purchase a professional mask like this one. Glass weights or perspex you can use. 
weights you can make at home or you can also purchase them. Brushes can be easily bought in art stores. The micro vacuum attachments can be easily bought at vacuum cleaning stores. So you can easily make a little wooden frame like this one here using some wood and using some mesh that you can purchase from a textile store. You can also purchase embroidery hoops from a textile store as well. As I mentioned earlier, your hearing is really important to you. So it's really important to make sure that you wear earmuffs if you're going to be using a vacuum cleaner for a lengthy period of time. You could also use earplugs as well. These can also help. So I hope that's introduced you to the techniques of brush vacuuming. As we always say, if in doubt, please contact a conservator. We're more than happy to help in any way that we can. Thank you.